Shout out to Derek Laufman. He's the one that originally drew this image. He's a comic book illustrator from what I could tell from his website. I'll link that down below. So to start out, you're going to need tracing film. Any tracing paper will work for this, but I like to use this stuff from Tandy Leather. The next thing you're going to need is tape. Any sort of tape will work. You're going to want to use something that's not going to leave a lot of oils behind, like electrical tape or duct tape. Lastly, you're going to need a pencil. Mechanical pencils work best because they have a really fine point, allowing for better precision and a cleaner overall stencil. Once you have your supplies, slap that bad boy on there. Once you're finished attaching your transfer paper to the image you want to trace, you're ready to get started. I'm using something that's backlit, so I'm going to turn the lights off, and it'll make it a lot easier to see the edges of the image through the transfer paper. If you're tracing something you found in a book or some other place, then you may be able to just put the tracing paper on the paper that you're tracing from and do it in normal lighting. However, if you can backlight it, it's definitely the way to go. You may notice that I'm not using personal art or art that I've drawn myself. I have a hard time drawing. I developed tendonitis in both my hands after deploying for the Army as an electrician. For some reason, they wouldn't trust us with power tools to install outlets and light switches. So we were stuck using regular hand screwdrivers. I personally installed 150 outlets and 50 switches in a 12-hour shift, and the next day uh, I developed what's called a ganglion cyst on my right hand. Uh, it's near my thumb. I'll try and put a picture up. But uh, it swells up anytime I use my hand too much, and it actually, uh, because it's so close to an artery that supplies blood to my hand, it'll cause, it'll kind of like pulse, <laughs> which is kind of gross. Um, but it also put my hand to sleep, which is kind of crappy. But anyways, you'll notice that I'm using an iPad to trace this. I find it's a lot easier to use touchscreen. If you can use a touchscreen laptop, those work really well because you can disable the touchscreen and it's meant to have a little bit of pressure on it so you're not going to damage the screen. I've traced stuff off of my 55-inch Vizio and I haven't had too much of an issue. You just got to remember not to lean on it and to basically just barely barely touch it, but clearly you can't you can do everything on an iPad. For most small projects, it'll work really well. The only issue is if you touch the sides or put your hand on it at all, it'll read that through the tracing film and it will throw the image off. So what you want to do is scale it first and take a screenshot. If you can get it close to an edge, if it's a smaller image, you're going to have a, a lot better luck making your trace look good. Another thing that you need to consider while you're doing this is since you're looking through tracing paper, which they vary in thickness, this is actually fairly thick. You could do a stencil with this tracing film from Tandy's and then reuse that stencil over and over and over again before you end up putting holes in it. Regular tracing paper tends to stretch, especially when it gets a little bit wet. So if you're using that, you want to make sure your leather is like almost too dry to work with sometimes and you'll have a little better luck transferring, especially with wax base since it'll put some of the wax into the leather and give you a good solid line. But because you're looking through the tracing paper and you're also looking through a glass screen, which because it's a touchscreen it's going to be thicker. The image is set so far back that if you're not looking straight down at the image, your image will end up warped. So because I'm spinning it constantly, I'm getting a different perspective. So you'll notice occasionally the lines that I'm drawing on don't line up with the actual edge on the image. And that's because I'm looking at it as straight down as I possibly can and trying to keep the same perspective consistently. So if I, if I start out and I put the line right over where the actual line is and I'm sitting too far back further than like a 45 degree angle from the thing I'm sketching and I keep rotating it, what will happen is the image will be completely blown out or pushed together. can't remember which it is. Depends on how you're tracing it, I guess, which part you're doing it at any given time. So you'll also notice that I'm making really small movements with my hand. This is clearly sped up. I think this one's 500% or 700% of the speed I'm actually doing it. I slow it down at the very end and I also slowed it down at the beginning. So you can kind of gauge how quickly I'm tracing. I can't remember the total time for this. I think it was like 18 minutes or something. It's not a very big piece, but like I said, you got to make sure you get the right perspective um, or you'll end up warping the image. So those short lines, those are because around those curves, because I'm reaching so far out with the pencil, I'm, I'm kind of doing like the whole line rider ramp thing around curves. It's a bunch of little tiny hashes and then I can 
take that once it's completely done and I take it off of the tablet, I'll just go back over and sharpen up all the lines that I had previously done. So before I do any of the, the details, I like to typically, this doesn't have a whole lot of fine details. I will do one with fine details uh, a little later on, but I'm probably not going to record the tracing step except for, for time lapses because I plan on doing these that kind of go over what exactly I'm doing to kind of help people trying to learn how to do leather work and learn how to transfer images. But as far as, you know, videos and stuff, unless I'm time lapsing an entire process, I probably won't cover the tracing thing off of the tablet again. You can also use adult coloring books, like I said earlier. They have probably the best setup for tracing. If, you, if you've ever done any tooling or looked into like figure tooling or like pictorial carving and stuff like that, the landscapes and the images and the lines they put in for the shading and stuff on there, they translate really, really well to leather tooling because it gives you all of those little shadows and stuff. Like right now, what I'm doing is I'm outlining all of the color changes because at this point I'm not sure whether or not I want to put those colors in. Uh, I might not necessarily carve these lines but they give me a reference point so when I do go to paint it I can lighten a color or darken a color up and just use this tracing film as kind of a reference for where I'm going to paint those colors if I'm not going to carve the hard line in which in this piece I end up carving those fine lines in the color transitions in and I think I miss actually a few lines in this trace. And if that happens, you just want to make sure that when you're removing the tracing paper from the image that you're tracing, you always want to leave one side on there. Like don't take one of the sides off. And then you can always line it back up and fix any mistakes or things you missed. If you enjoyed watching, uh, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Half Cocked Leatherwork. And I also live stream on Twitch under Half Cocked Creations. Although right now I'm kind of taking a break from that to get these videos started. Enjoy the rest of the video. And thanks for watching.